Sticking items in your ears to extract earwax yourself can make things worse. Even if swabbing removes a little earwax, it may push more back in. But why have earwax at all? Investigating a nearly 5,000-year-old Sumerian burial site, archaeologists came across intriguing sets of artifacts. They judged them to be toiletry kits, comprising pointed tools, tweezers, and ear scoops. In fact, grooming paraphernalia, including earwax removal tools, have popped up in many different archaeological sites and earwax evacuation remains a popular hygienic habit today. But what is earwax? And are the efforts to eliminate it actually good for us? Well, to start, we're not alone in our waxy ways. Other mammals also produce earwax. A 12-year-old blue whale was discovered with an earwax earplug that was 25 centimeters long. Earwax, technically called cerumen, forms in our outer ear canals. There, skin cells slough off and mix with other substances, including sweat. But the sweat inside our ears doesn't function to cool us off like the kind that comes out of the eccrine glands dotting our bodies. Instead, it comes from apocrine glands, like those in our armpits, and is oilier. Dead skin and oily sweat mix with sebum, the fatty oil that's also found on our faces and scalps. And voila, it's earwax. But earwax ranges in odor, color, and consistency. Some is flaky and dry, other kinds are sticky and gooey. A change in a single nucleotide on one gene determines which type you have by affecting how much fat your ears' apocrine sweat glands secrete, and the kind someone has may track with their ancestry. For example, drier earwax is common among people with East Asian heritage, while people of African and European descent more often have wetter earwax. Just to get this out of the way, no human earwax, wet or dry, would make a good candle. Okay, but why have earwax at all? Well, it seems these secretions actually help keep our ears healthy. Earwax can act as a lubricator that prevents ear dryness and itchiness. It traps debris and microbes and forms a physical barrier that protects the ear canal skin. And it's an active line of defense. Researchers have identified several proteins in earwax that combat bacterial infections. Generally, the ear also has its own way of getting rid of earwax. As new skin cells form and grow at the center of the eardrum, they push the older ones toward the opening of the ear canal, forming a conveyor belt where dead skin cells mix with those oily secretions. Every day, the skin within the ear canal migrates outwards about a hundred micrometers. Eventually, this process should push the wax out of your ear. Meanwhile, sticking items in your ears to extract earwax yourself can make things worse. Even if swabbing removes a little earwax, it may push more back in. And it can leave scratches in the ear canal skin, disrupting its natural barrier against infections. Deep cleaning also runs the risk of perforating your eardrum, which can cause permanent damage and hearing loss. Some services promise to clear earwax, but should be avoided. Ear candling or coning involves a hollow candle lit on fire and placed over the ear canal. It's claimed that this generates enough air current to pull earwax out. However, Researchers have found that the amount of suction generated is minimal and that what's visible at the end is likely debris from the candle itself, not extracted earwax. In reality, the practice can lead to injuries and leave debris in the ears.
But some folks are more prone to earwax buildup and may find it becomes more of an issue with age. Earwax accumulation can be uncomfortable and affect your hearing, and there are definitely times when intervention is needed. But there are safer ways to go about it. Over-the-counter eardrops help soften earwax, so it can make its way out on its own. And healthcare providers have tried and true methods of gently clearing blockages. Otherwise, to prevent earwax buildup, doctors recommend gently cleaning the outside of the ear canal with a damp cloth and giving your ears a break from earplugs and earbuds when possible. In the absence of earwax obstructions, however, it's generally best not to mess with the ways of the wax.